Hi, my name is Larry, and I'm with Nanotech Coatings, and I'm here to talk about our uh, Nanotech products. Uh, what we have here is nanotechnology products that are for wood, quick seal and enhance, which is for our concrete products and masonry, anti-graffiti, very popular one, uh, marine coating, metal coating, stone coating. Here's our catalyst that works with a few of the uh, more powerful and stronger uh, um, sealers and coating and also circuit coding. This is just a few of what we have. We have more than this. And uh, we want to discuss today some of the questions that have been coming across. What makes our products different than all the other coatings out there on the marketplace? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of things. First of all, we want to look at molecular attachment. With molecular attachment, we want to know how is molecular bonding in a little science lesson here, as the text kind of explained it to me. What we have here with the ionic bond, if you take your substrate, we're going to represent with a molecule like that, and the same substrate over here, whether it's metal, wood, glass, what have you. Uh, that would be the nucleus, and here you have the electrons running around on the outside. And then what you do is you bring in uh, the other, uh, uh, the coating on top of it. And that would be recipient, but probably by a smaller molecule here. And what's happening here, you're doing an exchange of electrons that creates somewhat of, of an attachment. It's an exchange of electrons rather than a shared union with them. What you have with a covalent bond, you'll introduce your molecule with that coating on the nano coating, and it will share the electrons so that becomes a union. It is permanent. This is continuously changing, exchanging back and forth, and you don't have the permanency of more of a temporary bond versus permanent. This is covalent, and that's your ionic. Now let's talk about the strength of the bond in, in what happens when you put it on your substrate. The substrate, what I'm talking about, would be, again, wood, metal, glass, paint, but if you take a closer look at it, this representing your substrate here and the flat surface that we think is flat, the naked eye says it is, but when you look at a closer level under a microscope, what you're going to find is that smooth looking surface is actually quite jagged. And depending upon what you're looking at, it has a lot of places where things can grab on. That's why dust will collect on a glass surface and hold on there. That's why you put wax on it so it'll make an even surface and fly off or come off a little bit easier. Now that's your substrate. Now we're going to go to the coating that you're going to put on, on top of that substrate, which we're looking at anywhere from uh, 0.1 to 2.5 mils thickness. So you get an idea of the thickness that we're dealing with on here. And we're going to represent that by this purple here. This is how the coating will go on. And it'll work its way in between all the different areas depending upon the viscosity of your product. And we'll lay on top of it like that. Now what's going to happen is your ionic bond it's going to pick particular points where it's going to have a strength of bond. That's why it sticks. And you know it sticks because you've used it and it stays there for a year or two years. But pretty soon it oxidizes and you have to replace it. Things attached to it and it gets dirty. And it wears down. And mainly because of the bond that it has on there. It doesn't have quite the bond that the covalent would. So if we're going to represent all those orange attachments of an ionic bond with that, you can see that there's gaps in between. Here's what happens at the microscopic level. Now, the debris will come in from a different place. It will represent it with here. And it comes in, and these are all the gaps that it can fall in and attach to the substrate down below. Whether it's water, uh, oil, grease, any of your hydrocarbons, uh, acids, uh, food, beverages, etc. It finds a place to attach inside there. That's why it's harder to remove or doesn't quite hold it back the way you'd like it to. Now let's compare that with what a covalent bond would do. A covalent bond is going to go in at every molecule and it's going to attach as a permanent union. So now you're going to have, for every point of a union of an ionic bond, you're going to have thousands of bonds that are occurring with a covalent bond. So it's the difference of how much attachment you want on your bonds. One, or one, two, three, four, five thousand between each given point that you're going to hold it on to. So that makes your covalent bond, the more permanent bond, and the bond of choice, of course, with what we're looking at. When we look at the abrasion the test, it really proves it out. So this is just top notch above it, and will take care of you for the long term.